Okay, and welcome to the KCP community meeting. Uh, today we have a code of conduct, so please be excellent to each other. And with that being said, I will share the community meeting minutes and we can take a look at the agenda for today. So the first topic on the agenda is an update or saying or just general conversation on the CNCF sandbox checklist. Um, I can just bring that up real quick. I just wanted to talk about this so we're all aligned. Um, so I would say this looks quite good. Um, we have most of the items crossed out. I think the maintainer list, we also now have clarity about with the election of additional maintainers. Um, so first of all, congrats to all the new maintainers uh, to be selected. Thank you. I, I didn't want to recommend myself here. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so now that we have, I think, a more complete maintainer list, um, someone could go ahead and send the list or the email list of maintainers. Um, is there someone who is by chance already tracking that? No, I don't think so. We can do the commit one, which is above the creative maintainers list plus side aggregated maintainers list to PR it. And this one. Okay, is it a PR or is it because my. But, but the one above, there is a repository we need to do a Google get pull request. This is why I kind of wanted to extend the list a bit more before we submitting it. Like this one is, I think, just once you add those thing, people into that pull request, we need to send it somewhere to get some access. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit confused now because you're right. It seems like we need to do a pull request. I wonder what the uh, email address really is about, to be honest. But uh, I think, okay, I, maybe yeah, we should I start. Think with it will be the like a. They have the service desk and some other tooling which available to maintainers. I think it will just grant access to the maintainers to them. So it, the, it might. Yeah. Uh, the, the link maintainers in CFIO is confusing because it's URL, where it's a hyperlink to the Git repository. Ah, OK. Yeah, I didn't click it. OK, so we should definitely do. Uh, we should definitely do a pull request there, I suppose. And then I'm not sure if we need to email them extra if they're going to onboard everyone to the service desk, but I think we will figure that out from the PR. If, if that does all the magic stuff. OK. Um, was anyone looking at this already? OK, then I wouldn't mind going around collecting email addresses. Uh, uh, and open the PR. Yeah. I think that is, we have also the code of conduct thing unchecked, but I'm not sure maybe no one took a look yet. Stefan last time mentioned that I think we're using the code of conduct from the CNCF with the word CNCF removed. So we might be complying with this anyway. Yeah, I think we need to validate if it's if it's the same or what's, uh, I just looked it up, it's two years old. It, it's not mentioning CNCF. So if it's really the same. Okay, maybe we just pull the CNCF code of conduct and update ours. Yep. Okay, um, someone wants to take over that, or do we just? I mean, this one is not a major thing, so we can probably just discuss it on Slack and see. Um, 
analytics i think they also checked the analytics thing on our on the issue on the onboarding issue when we said that we don't have analytics so it might actually be good enough for now and then i haven't looked at the best practices batch but that also doesn't seem to be a huge deal so i think we are good to go um since they have said they want to onboard us within a month i think that is over beginning of next week um but maybe i mean i assume since we're making good progress we're getting a little bit of wiggle room here and i think we maybe could at least prepare the prs tomorrow uh, to get the missing items done so i think we're on a good track to finalize the onboarding okay the thing from my side is that on all the first part of the checklist the basically i checked those in but uh, for everybody to read through it makes very good reading before bed so just reserve like 30 45 minutes for that and go through okay yep that's that's a good point um we should all be familiar with this um so if you have some time add it to your to your i don't know maybe there's some ebook pdf version of it you can add to your ebook reader or something i don't know i'm not sure how long these are the trademark guidelines i checked them because they were also part of the website updates and they seem pretty straightforward Okay, um, sandbox onboarding. Anything else we should be discussing? Anything we should talk about? Okay, then I think that's it for the first agenda point. And the next one is MJ with tilt setup for local dev. Yeah, so I've been. I've been hunting, trying to hunt down the, that memory issue, which is a thread for there. So I was wondering, I will share what I have in place. Like my main concern is that the current, not a concern, a challenge, when you're currently developing a PCP, it's quite hard to do it in a bit real, realistic life scenario. Like we don't exercise in Cert manager, we don't exercise in the front proxy. It's a single binary. And I'm a bit of uh, on a cheaper spectrum of individual where I don't want to pay myself for the cloud infrastructure to run all the stuff. So let me try to share it. I'm going to commit it in, but this is, I think, a quite nice one to start up. So basically, I have this tilt config running where uh, if I change something in a code base and I'm not sharing there now, but I can like show on the side. If I basically change the code, you will see up in the bottom, like immediately compiles and it gets, does a hot reload for the services itself. This one got compiled, this one gets restarted and it basically allows you to debugging. On top of that, um, I use the, so now I share the wrong stuff, let me share uh, window, this one. So on top of that, I basically, this is where the conversation came with the, with the DNS names and the certificates and everything, because everything runs on my local machine. I needed like proper certificates. And if I open the browser, you see that the certificates are valid and I can access it from outside because I use Cloudflare tunnels. You can get those for free accounts. Like anybody can log in and create those where you create a, with your own domain. If you have anything in Cloudflare, you create a tunnel, you configure it to point it to ingress internally. And this component runs inside of tilt cluster 
So it basically forwards outside internet traffic directly to the ingress and it pretends it's exposed to the internet. And this is where the termination issue was problematic because internal CAs are all the internally signed and this gets terminated at the Cloudflare ingress in the cluster. And on top of that, you get like Prometheus metrics automatically, localhost exposed. You get the, where is those? You get Loki logs. Which uh, say KCP. Basically, you can start doing log from like log queries if you need to find something in the TVR and doing the CLI stuff on scraping the, the shell, basically and all the Prometheus stuff and everything, which is where I'm still working to setting up the scraping the KCP metrics for the out of memory issue. So, and yeah, and like there's a few other components deployed, which I didn't talk about, but like, so this is something I've been brewing for the last few days while on a, on a baby duty. So we're going to commit, I think I'm going to try to get it to the contrib's folder in the main repository. So prerequisite for this is to use like own a domain in a Cloudflare, set up a tunnel, and should be easier for more realistic debugging scenarios and testing production stuff. I mean, this, this looks quite great. Um, I haven't looked into Till too much up to now. Is it, what is it based on? Is it talking to a kind installation on your uh, laptop or? Yes, let me, I can share the okay. different window. Sorry, like I have big monitor, so I need to share and reshare. So usually tilt basically has this uh, config file, you define it. So I I wrote a simple shell script, not quite a simple, but so what it does, it set up, uh, set up a registry for the images for the rebuild, set up a kind cluster. So everything here is just set up of a kind cluster. And after that, you execute a tilt, tilt file. Tilt file is like make file. And you specify run Grafana, expose Grafana to my local host. Run Loki from Helm chart, expose it to my local host from, from the kind. Same from Prometheus tail, like, and here's goes KCP stuff. And because I keep it in a contrib there, it goes like this is, this means if any of these folders and subfolders gets touched in a code based manner, it will rebuild the binary and rebuild the image and go do a hot reload within kind itself. So you get this stuff and bit of. There's a bit of magic here, which I need to document. And at the end is like a run a Cloudflare tunnel, which is, it's like, you will just need to bump in your token here, rename it to the normal file and that's it. I don't know, I've, I didn't use till before, but I just recently started using it and quite enjoying it for local development. So I thought I'm gonna try throw it in here. I mean, this this looks pretty uh, pretty great to have it in the KCP repo, and if people want to run it that way, it's definitely closer to a real setup than running the binary, right? So yeah, it's that's like you need the beefier machine to run it, but I mean, it, it gives that perception of, of like front proxy, all the traffic, cert manager certificates, all that stuff. You can even if to have something more advanced ingress router than uh, Cloudflare, like uh, something squid proxy manner, you could just uh, get like let's encrypt working too. But that's a uh, if somebody has time, it can add to that. I haven't quite understood why you need let's encrypt for for testing locally. I've, why why is that important? It's like honestly, it isn't. It's just because. It's, a, it's in our Helm chart, which we maintain. 
So what I just do, I just tap that Helm chart into kind and say like bootstrap me, bootstrap me the KCP, and it does it. So at the same time, we're exercising the Helm chart a bit. Sure, sure. But just for right. for play, plainly testing KCP, you technically, but you don't need it. Just have custom yeah, honestly, honestly, at this point in time, it was easier for me to use Cert Manager and bootstrap it than not to use it, just because everything was already in the Helm chart repository. If it would be my personal choice, I would never use Cert Manager, and I just got it on record, recorded. But that's a different conversation. Because for for our dev system, I think we went the opposite way and just uh, use like CF SSL to create certificates locally, and then start like a KCP container with Docker and a front front proxy container with Docker, and that's it. Yeah, yeah and that's. So I think that makes yeah. sense here too. It's not super realistic, but it's, it's much less overhead. And for my old laptop, because my boss won't buy me a new one again this year, um, it's good enough. Now that is also on record. Um, um, but it's, I just, while we're talking about Let's Encrypt, I just wanted to ask it, uh, because we had the same uh, requirement that our KCP is exposed to the internet and is it a good idea to to sign the this uh, so use let's encrypt as a cluster CA? I... We are not tunneling it. We are putting an nginx in front of it uh, that breaks client cert authentication because nginx can't forward client cert stuff. Yeah, but I had no good reason because we're using a CA already for like service accounts and other things. So all these things should be taken care of. Just fed queasy, Mike. Do you have? Yeah. Um. My understanding is that, and in fact, I'm practicing it. Uh, Nginx can do uh, TLS pass through. Oh, nice. It does. Yeah. It 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 gets a bit performance penalty, but it can. It's it. There's not a you know, standard interface for you know asking for it, but if you look at the documentation, you can find out how to do it. Huh. Okay. I, and this is really where my knowledge gets a little bit wonky, but I think if you do the TLS forwarding, um, the engine S, uh, the engine X stops terminating the connection, right? Uh, so in that case, yes, I'm sorry. I thought that's what you wanted. Yes, that's what I'm doing. There are other cases. Um, I'm that's the one I'm familiar with because that's what I want in my case. Yeah, no, the, 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 that makes sense. Uh, makes sense. Um, but um, I, so so I think what Christopher was talking about are our scenarios a bit. Okay, we have a self-signed CA that the front proxy is using for certificates, and then the engine X was supposed to terminate with a let's encrypt certificate in front of that. Um, but that that won't work with the TLS pass through because then. Uh, it would expose the uh, certificates of the front proxy gain, which would still be the self-signed ones. Which... So your front proxy uh, certificate is still self-signed. Yeah. So you're basically having the same prop, like same problem I'm having in my local setup. Like if you want customers to automatically trust the certificates, you basically need to do re-encrypt on the Nginx level. Yep. Like Nginx has a proper certificate. You do re-encryption to your own self. Exactly. But for this to work, you need to expose your front proxy still to the, to the reachable network for that reverse connectivity back once for the logical clusters, the one we talked in the threads because the workspace controller will go back through the front proxy and goes basically backwards. And that guy has baked in CA, which in the current certificate chain is the same one which front proxy signs the certificates. Yep. And in my case, for example, because there is no this upper layer, I go directly there. I like I, I was not able to do that, but like if you have a separate server, server with a load balancing and everything on top, terminating and basically forwarding to the endpoint, which is accessible to the KCP, that I think that should work. 
we just have two public endpoints mm -hmm. one with the self-signed certificate um, and one with it let's encrypt yeah one would be like semi-public another another one yep thank you um yeah i'm not quite sure i followed all of, all of that um but um if the problem is you want uh nginx to terminate the tls and then forward the identity of the client um you know that might be something nginx can do too i i would look at the uh you know documentation and, and the web uh before concluding that can't be done i was just guessing because that in my mind cannot work because that breaks the end-to-end -end stuff and well, I deliberately would... said forwards the client identity, not credentials. Because yes, the the yeah. nginx couldn't impersonate the client, but it could uh, assert this yeah. is what the client uh, authenticated as. That's right. Yep, you're right. And we're just doing all of this spiel because I felt not sure if if it makes sense to use Let's Encrypt for for the CA for that stuff. Maybe it makes total sense, and we're just overly cautious. It's, uh, you know how I say, it. it's fine until it's not. Yep. It's like, I'm, I'm cautious too on this front, and this is why I would prefer to maintain internally managed certificates, either even self manager, self sign, which gets rotated, exactly. and have an external entry point, which is either Cloudflare, Nginx, Less Encrypt, or whatever, where basically customers come sense. Okay, I didn't want to steal away the conversation, but we had we thought about let's encrypt, so I thought I'd throw it in. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, I I think this tilt file would be uh, would be great for for the repo in any case, right? Um, so I will one. I will tidy it up and then submit it maybe tomorrow, maybe today. Okay. Great. Cool. Thank you. Then I think maybe let's move on to the rebase update topic. MJ, yes. that is also yours. So Stefan is not here. So because I don't want to drag it to the next week, most of the like most of the work was done by Stefan. So there is kudos to him a lot. And we merged the rebase last week, which is I think we're in a quite good shape. We still have the bit of lake in the end to end test, but those with before too. I think it's a part it's issue of the migration to the different prowl and some magic in the previous prowl. So there is nothing stopping now to cut a release apart that we're letting it sink a bit just to sit in a repository, run tests in SCI and then the PRs and see how it goes. So I think if everything goes fine and we can decide next week if we want to or not to cut a release. I think one of the bigger issues for cutting a release, we need to find that memory out of me like a go routine issue first as a prerequisite for cutting this one. And there was one more issue which I raised the PR for the, uh, for the, you know, I'm not sure if it got merged or no, not yet from proxy one, like three zero to three, but that's. Yeah. Yep. But all of this sounds great. Um, I think it makes sense to, to wait a couple of uh, days at least, uh, since we already have, we, right now we have issues that we know about. Um, so let's maybe wait until we have them fixed to cut a release. Mm -hmm. I don't think it makes like looking at what we have discussed about the memory leak on Slack, I don't think it makes sense to cut a release with what honestly appears to be a pretty massive memory leak. Um, I, yeah. So yeah, I, I think this is great. I'm really happy to hear that the rebase went through and so. Uh, yeah, um, but you, I think you said that in between um, the latest image tag thing. I want to look at that. Um, yeah, I noticed that one when we started testing. Like, despite the fact we're merging the commits, we never tag main and latest tags anymore. So yep. there is a commit tags only. Yeah, yep. no, I, I looked at, at the script that does the tagging and it simply doesn't do this. And I started 
I, like I had it open in my editor in addition to the script that would I add left it like, out on purpose. You left it out on purpose. I left it out on purpose because we got hit by uh, a problem where our scripts for some of our products always take latest and we released an out of band patch release for an older release and whoops, that suddenly became latest and it broke a lot of stuff. So I'm, I don't like latest tagging with the branch name, I think is, is really smart. Uh, yeah, I would totally I've... support that latest. No, no, no. It's like we just had it before. I totally agree. Latest is the evil of, of Docker invention. It's like it, it broke so much things in the production. But the tagging main yeah. is a quite neat one. It would be good to have that. Yeah. That we can do. I, I, I wonder. I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I think we should tag based on commits to main and have something that moves. I just wonder if it should stay latest because that is kind of a convention at this point, and we have been doing it in the past, or the KCP project has been doing it in the past. So I, I would I was looking at implementing a logic that would check if the commit is on the main branch, like if they if if if, if the CI is running on the main branch, and then tag it as latest. I can maybe send that as a proposal, and then you can decide if you're comfortable with it or not. I think if we had Mike, you don't only have to have one tag. Also, you can have multiple tags, right? Yes, for sure, for sure. But um, like all the manifests, I I think even the hand chart still references latest. Um, oh, that's even more evil. Yeah, we should change that. Um, we uh, we we didn't bump that, but I guess when we do the next KCP release, we should be bumping the hand chart again to maybe 0 0.4 or something, and then we can update it to, to use the, the version tag finally. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna work on the, on, on the script change and then send it for your consideration. And then let's see if you wouldn't adjust it to be main or if we just wanted to stay latest because latest or main to me is if it's the same concept, let's go with the one that is already well established. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I think that might be it for the WeBase update then. Um, let's see. Take a look. And okay, then... the next agenda item is mine, and I have to go to my next meeting. So unfortunately, I can't say anything extensive. I just want to call attention to this issue. Um, it still needs some work. It's it still needs, yeah. I've... Yeah, we. I remember we were discussing this. I think we also are feeling the pain of accessing KCP from within Kubernetes sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I think there needs to be some some thoughts about it. And maybe the, the kubectl plugin should be storing the URL somewhere. Um, anyway, got to go. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe actually. Yeah, I've, this is, it's, it's a bit, you know, Mike left. Like yeah. It should be storing. But the problem is that the URL it's been taking is basically from the workspace stuff and workspace URL is not same one. It's, yeah, it's, I think all these problems make... goes away when you do a proper setup, like having a trials external loot and everything, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it makes sense to revisit this on the next meeting, yeah. uh, assuming that Mike can make it. I unfortunately didn't know he had a uh, uh, a limit. We can always move around things on the agenda, um, depending on on people's time availability. Um, hey, um, do we have anything else we want to talk about right now? Um, maybe more as a loose i like a loose uh, thought than uh, um than something worth adding to the agenda um 
I want to take a look and like a really like a look at what's going on with the E two E tests because they are performing very poorly, and at some point it. I don't know, it, 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 it sort of gets embarrassing to run retest three times on the PR that is adding you as a maintainer, so it can get through. Um, so I think we should do something about that. And I can take a look uh, because I think I also have access to the nodes powering the Prowl cluster, or I can get access to them. Um, I'm not sure if it's really a node issue, to be honest. Um, but I, I, I will take a look and figure out what's going on. The part which triggered me is that on the Red Hat Prowl, they used to have 11 CPUs on the request for those particular jobs. It's like 11. And I was thinking, is that something they did a typo? Because that was in millicores, like 11,000? Or that was intentional because of something like that? Sounds like I want this node exclusively, please and thank you. Yeah. So we are using T3 uh, 2x large machines at the moment. So pretty beefy already. Yeah, we honestly, Stefan also mentioned this on Slack. Maybe we just need to turn parallelism down a bit or something. Um, I haven't looked at that too much. I'm just like taking his statement. Uh, at face but, value. But we don't have, maybe, like, I, I just had a, yeah, I had, the question is how much jobs we're running at this point in time, like, if we run in one PR, I think parallelism might not be the problem just because it's not very active. I, I thought you meant within the job, something running in parallel, but I mean, if you, if you look at, I can show if you look at the pro, there aren't that many jobs going on in parallel. Yeah. So we like we have like two, maybe three, okay, four E two E jobs spawned by each PR. The others are just you know linting and building the image. Although these could like also have side effects, right? Um, but we seldom have multiple PRs in parallel. I believe. Um, oh, there's a cube stellar too here. So. Yes, cube stellar is also on on the prow mm -hmm. instance. Do all of our jobs already have resource requests, so that we, they are queued up if we don't have enough nodes? I, I believe they have requests, but no limits. Yes, request is okay. There, yeah, yeah, but I think they all have limits if I remember correctly. I can quickly validate. We can quickly validate, uh, but yeah, this looks good. So the code gen and verify, they have smaller requests, that's fine. The lint one is already a bigger one. Um, the E2E ones have four gigabyte of memory and the CPUs. I, I would say that should usually be somewhat sufficient. But maybe we also need to take a look at, and I'm not very familiar with prowl monitoring, but maybe we also need to take a look at historic data if we have it, or we need to start collecting historic data to figure out if the jobs are behaving very differently from the requests. I think this is the parallelism Stefan might have in ah, mind. Yeah, yeah, I think you might be right. Let's see. I, I I think a good try would just tap one, try to merge it and see how it works. We can always revert it. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a good idea. Um, let's try that maybe. Um, I was also thinking about timeouts maybe being too conservative and maybe they just need to, like the tests need to, late, need to wait a little longer until they consider something failed. Uh, but I think we should start with the parallelism and see how that affects stability and execution time of the E2E jobs. Yeah. OK. OK. 
Is there anything else that we want to discuss? For the issues, we don't have anything new apart that Go routine one. Um, yeah, let me bring up that view. Uh, where did I put it? Huh, I might need to put, actually add it to the agenda document. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yes, okay. Uh, looking here, we, oh, that's no milestone. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for this view that we always open here, but I'm not sure. Incoming, I guess it's incoming, so. Yeah, it's incoming. Uh, yeah. So I think it's pretty clear that this one is a real one. Um, then. We're saying that this is a regression. Regression from where? Because our KCP 020 is already behaving badly. It's a regression from the 126. So. Okay. That's the one pages. we're using. Yeah. No, so okay. um, here the the community member that opened the issue already tracked it down oh, nice. uh, to between the commits, and I believe um, I I believe this is the we base to one dot twenty six. And um, it's a huge one. <laughs> yeah. So. I I tried reading the PR slide, the commit itself. It's a huge one. So this is why I started the building the, the environment. Yeah. So. And okay. plus, due to the rebase, I think there were also all the fork libraries and uh, fork repositories involved, right? So maybe the bug is in one of them. Um, so, yeah. I think the, the guy who, who raised it did like excellent job. There's enough information there to, to go and start it. I just didn't have this uh, setup where I could go in and start poking around, changing something and observing if things happening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's P, uh, PPROF data uh, attached. Uh, he even dissected things, all of this data. This is probably the best bug report I've seen in a long while. So kudos to Adrian, I suppose. This is really great. OK, um, but yeah, we 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 know it's real, or we, we are pretty sure it's real. Um, we've seen it in our own installations once we started looking. Um, I would say we even I, move this. Yeah. Yeah, make it in progress, and I'm going to assign it to myself. I think I might even, I can do this for you already if, if that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Christoph, do you also want to be assigned given that you are looking into it? Do you want to yeah, I am a standby and would, would, I would look from afar. It doesn't make sense if two people spent their time on this. Okay. You know what I really could use? If you already have a job scrape config for the KCP in your environment, what exactly? Pro Prometheus scrape job for the KCP instance. Because of you were building ah, exactly yeah. that. I, I just built a, um, a stateful set with one port that just runs kubectl proxy at ah. the moment. And then I just let Prometheus scrape that one port. I can give it to you, that manifest. Uh, um, I will ping you tomorrow if I will not get this spent today. I want to get it in the Helm chart in a one on a way too, so I'm not trying yeah, to. Yeah, what I built is not a proper solution for the Helm chart. We probably, I don't know if you need a sidecar container that, that publishes the metrics without authentication, if I, you want that. Even this one, or I was thinking uh, that currently to access the metrics, you need a service account token from within the KCP. So I was thinking maybe a merge uh, AC in the bootstrapping assets where we have like create workspaces, create things, try to create a service account in the root workspace and a secret. It's just a placeholder there. So when you bootstrapping the environment, you can just pick it up and throw it to the Prometheus as a, as a using, as a bitter token basically. But I don't know, I'm just like the, I'm, Started this and and call now happening, so I'm gonna continue after this one. 
yeah, I guess it would also be maybe an option or it would be nice if the metrics endpoint could be opened on a different port that's simply not available to the internet. Then you might not need the whole authentication or at least you could consider skipping authentication because you have a network walled off from unauthorized access. That but would yeah. be my favorite. It's Configuring the certificates and stuff in Prometheus is always a bit of a hassle. Does the Cube API server allow us to do that? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, but I'm also not sure how our metrics work exactly in KCP. Um, so because it's because it's based on a Cube API server, so it's the same behavior. This question is: Is, is that guy supports? Yeah, okay. I need to go and read the code or doc. Yeah, we, I mean, we can further sync on this on Slack, mm -hmm. maybe. But yeah, it's an it's an interesting thing, and yeah, it would be great if you can add this kind of stuff to, uh, to the Helm chart. Maybe even for Prometheus operator, optionally, the I think it would be a service monitor. All these kind of like automation, um, the, there's a lot of potential that we can add to the Helm chart. Yeah. But let's see. Okay, um, then. I will keep this one uh, as it is right now because we didn't get to discuss it today. Um, so I believe then in two weeks um, we, we can talk about it again and, and see how we can help Mike. Yeah. Okay. Then I think that's it for the usual agenda, meeting agenda. Is there anything else to discuss? Nothing from my side. Okay, great. Then thank you all for joining. I will stop the recording. Have a great day and talk to you all in two weeks or probably less. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya.